Hello everyone. We continue to explain the operations management topic by presenting a series of videos related to material requirement planning, manufacturing requirement planning, and enterprise resources planning. If you would like to watch the entire series of operations management topics, click on the above link. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the alarm to be notified of the new videos. Let us start with Material Requirement Planning. Material Requirement Planning, or we will call it MRP hereafter, is a process that translates the finished product requirements of the master schedule into time-phased requirements for sub-assemblies, component parts, and raw materials, working backward from the due date using lead times and other information to determine when and how much to order. There are three inputs for the MRP. The first one is the master schedule, which tells how much finished product is desired and when, while the second is the inventory records file, which tells how much inventory is on hand or on order, and the last is the bill of materials, which tells the composition of a finished product. The listing in the bill of materials is hierarchical. It shows the quantity of each item needed to complete one unit of its parent item. The nature of this aspect of a bill of materials is clear when you consider a product structure tree, which provides a visual depiction of the sub-assemblies and components needed to assemble a product. This figure shows an assembly diagram for a chair and a simple product structure tree for the chair. The end item, in this case, the chair, is shown at the top of the tree. Just beneath it are the sub-assemblies, or major components, that must be put together to make up the end item. Beneath each major component are the necessary lesser components. At each stage moving down the tree are the components, parts, materials, needed to make one unit of the next higher item in the tree. A product structure tree is useful in illustrating how the bill of materials is used to determine the quantities of each of the ingredients, requirements, needed to obtain a desired number of end items. Let's consider the shown product structure tree. The end item X is composed of two Bs and one C. Moreover, each B requires three Ds and one E, and each D requires four Es. Similarly, each C is made up of two E's and two S. These requirements are listed by level, beginning with zero for the end item, then one for the next level, and so on. The items at each level are components of the next level up and, as in a family tree, are parents of their respective components. Note that the number between parentheses represents the quantities of each item in the product structure tree referring only to the amounts needed to complete one assembly at the previous level. Let us solve an example. Use the information presented later to do the following. Determine the quantities of B, C, D, E, and F needed to assemble one X. Then determine the quantities of these components that will be required to assemble 10 Xs, taking into account the quantities on hand, i.e., in inventory, of various components shown in this table. For the first question, to produce 1x, two b's are required. So, b equals 2 multiplied by 1 is equal to 2. Moreover, to produce 1x, 1c is required. So, c equals 1 multiplied by 1 is equal to 1. Moving to the next level, 3d's are required to produce 1b. So D equals 3 multiplied by 2, as 2 Bs are required for 1X, equals 6. For item E, 1E is required to produce 1B. So E equals 1 multiplied by 2, because 2 Bs are required for 1X, equals 2. Another 2 Es are required to produce 1C. So E equals 2 multiplied by 1 equal 2 and two Fs are required to produce one C. So, F equals two multiplied by one equal two. In the last level, only one item is there, where four Es are required for the production of one D. So, 
e equals 4 multiplied by 6 is equal to 24. Finally, the required quantities of items to produce 1x are 2b's, 1c, 6d's, 28e's, and 2f's. Going to the second question to determine the quantities of these components that will be required to assemble 10x's, taking into account the quantities on hand. In the first level, we know that two b's are required to assemble 1x. So, to assemble 10x's, b equals 2 multiplied by 10 equals 20. But four b's are there on hand. So, these four have to be subtracted from 20 results in 16 b's. At the same level, 1c is required to produce 1x. So, to assemble 10x's, c equals 1 multiplied by 10 equal 10. But 10 c's are there on hand. So, these 10 have to be subtracted from 10 results in 0 c's. In the next level, 3 d's are required to produce 1 b. So, to assemble 16 b's, d equals 3 multiplied by 16 equal 48. But 8 d's are there on hand. So, these 8 have to be subtracted from 48 results in 40 d's. In the same level, 1 e is required to produce 1 b. So, to assemble 16 b's, e equals 1 multiplied by 16 equals 16. Leave the 60 e's on hand as a penalty of ease are required in the last level. No requirement from these two items in this level as c equals zero. In the last level, four e's are required for one d. So, to produce 40 d's, e equals four multiplied by 40 is equal to 160. The 60 e's on hand have to be subtracted from 160 results in 100 e's. Finally, the required quantities of items to produce 10 X's are 16 B's, 0 C, 40 D's, 116 E's, and 0 S. Another example. This figure illustrates the product structure tree of an end item. While the table shows the quantity on hand from each item, if 20 units of the end item are to be assembled, how many additional units of each item are needed? In the first level, the number of B's required to assemble 20 end items equals 2 multiplied by 20 equal 40. Subtract the 10 B's available on hand so the result is 30. The second subassembly is C. The number of C's equals 1 multiplied by 20 equal 20. Minus 10, the items on hand, equal 10. The third subassembly in this level is D. The number of D's required to assemble 20 end items equals 3 multiplied by 20 equals 60. Subtract the 25 D's available on hand, so the result is 35. In the second level, the number of E's required to assemble 30 B's equals 2 multiplied by 30 equals 60. Subtract the 12 E's available on hand, so the result is 48. For item F, the number of F's required to assemble 30 B's equals 3 multiplied by 30 equal 90. Subtract the 30 F's available on hand so the result is 60. The next item is G. The number of G's required to assemble 10 C's equals 2 multiplied by 10 equals 20. Subtract the 5 G's available on hand so the result is 15. Item E is required again. The number of E's required to assemble 10 C's equals 2 multiplied by 10 equals 20. The next item is H. The number of H's required to assemble 35 D's equals 4 multiplied by 35 equal 140. No H's is available on hand. The last required item is E. The number of E's required to assemble 35 D's equals 2 multiplied by 35 equals 70. Finally, the number of additional units of each item are 30 B's, 10 C's, 35 D's, 138 E's, 60 F's, 15 G's, and 140 H's. Now, 
we have learned how to obtain the required number of items to assemble a certain number of end items knowing the product structure tree and the quantity on hand from each item from the inventory record. The next step to develop the material requirement planning MRP is to construct the assembly time chart to show material order points needed to meet the scheduled availability of the end item. This step will be discussed in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video so press like and share it. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the alarm to be notified of the new videos. See you again.